There's no doubt about it. This coach and this Super Bowl champ share a raw intensity. But what runs even deeper for both is the drive for better mental health education. Keith O'Neill played in the NFL four seasons. You hear the old term about an NFL game's kind of like a, a car accident on your body? Um, I was reckless. I was a little, uh, I would do things other players wouldn't do. O'Neill says much of that time he'd been wrestling with crushing anxiety and insomnia. A lot of people ask me, why don't you go see a doctor? I'm like, it didn't even occur to me. I didn't know how to talk to a doctor about mental health because I was so, so uneducated about it. 2007 was a big year. O'Neill's Colts won the Super Bowl. The next year, O'Neill retired from the league. And then a couple of years after that, while working as a sales rep in Buffalo, O'Neill's roller coaster of extreme behavior drove him to see a doctor. A diagnosis redefined O'Neill forever. The disorder called bipolar one. Like my parents never had mental health awareness month. My parents never had um, education in school. So they just thought it was my personality. They just thought it was who I was. Maybe I was a little moody. According to the National Alliance on Mental Illness, people with bipolar disorder deal with dramatic shifts in mood, going back and forth between mania and depression. The only time I was ever really able to let it all out was on the football field. I was a very calm person, even though I had a lot going on inside. And then five years after he helped win a world championship. You know, rock bottom was probably the day or two after I took the 49 Ambien pills. There was a time in my life when I had nothing. I was in a psychiatric hospital, so I prayed for purpose in my life. O'Neill recently published Under My Helmet, a memoir of his mental illness, which brings us to the other man in this story, high school coach Jim Davis. Davis works at New Trier High School in Winneka, Illinois, outside Chicago. The closest he got to the NFL after college football was arena league play. Davis lost an acquaintance to suicide. We lost a former student, um, a person who became really important in our lives. He actually coached summer school strength. More mentor than strength coach, Davis brings loads of creativity and compassion to the sweaty, noisy high school gym. If we want to speak to it, we have to, we have to know it a little bit. You know, so we don't want to just pay lip service to, you know, mental health is important. It has affected everyone in this room, in this building, very directly. We are very open. We address concerns head on. We preface the day with um, just sort of a conversation. And one thing we will do is we'll talk about what we're doing in the community. We'll talk, we'll talk about uh, something, um, an unprovoked act of kindness that we've, we've accomplished. Davis invited O'Neill to bring mental health out into the open, into his gym, and onto the team. So as, as well considered as we try to be, they hear us every day, they interact with us every day. We needed a 6-2 NFL football player with a Super Bowl ring to come in and wedge the conversation open. I reach out to them and I say, you know, if there's anything going on upstairs um, that you're unsure about, if you have questions about, don't be afraid to ask somebody because there's people out there that are willing to help. Along my way, along my journey with mental illness, I had to talk to numerous people to figure out what was going on. I had to talk to Tony Dungy and Bill Polian and Bill Parcells and, and even my parents were there. I understand when I'm going into a manic episode or when I'm in a manic episode. I understand when I'm depressed. I understand when I'm in between. Say so you have to take your meds because when you're manic, you uh, do things that you end up regretting and you make very poor decisions. I do at least. If you're at the point in life where you feel like giving up, I was there and I did try to give up. And I've realized since then how many things I would have missed in life. And to hear someone like him talk, you know, Super Bowl champion, I uh, beat the Bears, which are my favorite team, and also he's the same position as me. And I remember watching that game. I was very little. I mean, you got to be a listener if somebody's going to come up and talk to you about it, because like you said, you just got you have to talk to someone about it if if it's bothering you. If we, as coaches, we're able to reflect a little bit more um, about the power of the space that we're in, that's a heavy and important obligation. It's one that we take very seriously. Julie Peterson, Winnetka, Illinois.